Good afternoon. I'm Lavina Sachte from MNIT Jaipur and I'm a team member of Enhancement to Proximity. My other team members include Ankit Yadu from NIT Raipur, Bhanumati from AITS and Neha Jindal from NIT Kurukshetra. First of all, before beginning, I would like to give a brief introduction on the term proximity. Proximity stands for Proxy Multimedia Integrated Tool for You. It basically serves as a proxy that it that is, it provides virtual cl closeness without the actual classroom. It helps users, specifically the students, to get access to quality lectures of repeated teachers like IIT professors for effective personalized learning in dynamic media rich environment. The scope of this project includes, it's basically a video app that, mainly, that is mainly intended for students of engineering disciplines and the students get the flexibility of studying anytime, anywhere and at their own pace. For example, there are sites like NPTEL where you can view the videos of IT professors, but there you have to sit in, in front of the desktop to view that. In this application, you, you can download the videos from the server and you can view it according to your own convenience. The basic uh, objective of this project was to enhance the proximity version that was previously developed and we have uh, mainly focused on developing the uh, GUI of the version. The previous uh, version has features like tree functionality, bookmarks and subtitles. I would like to give a few snapshots of the previous version. The first screen looked like this. It contained a list view of all the videos that were present in the SD card or in the server version. In the next screen, a video was there on the left side, that is the video played on the left side and the right hand side contain, uh, contained contents, that is the topic wise contents and on clicking on any of the contents, the video skipped to that position. The next feature that was there was the addition of bookmark. A user can create his or her own bookmark. He can give the video name, bookmark tag, start time, that is he can mention the position of the bookmark. By clicking on add bookmark, the bookmark is added to the database. And in the my bookmark feature, on clicking on that bookmark, the video skips to that particular position. This feature was useful because usually the videos were very long, they were like one hour timing. And if a user wanted to view a particular portion, he can just directly click on the bookmark to view that video. In the project enhancement to proximity, we have kept the features of the previous version. Plus, we have added some additional features like the drag and drop feature where a user can drag the video into the video view to play it. The transcript, the whole text of the video will be displayed at a time. And a compulsory quiz session that pops up after a certain amount of time. Okay. There were two different versions of proximity, proximity SD card and proximity Wi-Fi. In proximity SD card, all the list of the lectures that are stored in SD card or the pen drive can be viewed by the user. And in proximity Wi-Fi version, the lectures that were stored on the server can be viewed. You just have to give the IP address of the local server where the video folder is present. And by uh, configura configuring the settings, you can view the lectures that are present on the server. Some of the challenges that we faced during the present, uh, during making of this present, uh, application were, as Sir said, adapting to different work culture was a main challenge. Then open source technology and some real world problems. For example, we have tried as much as possible to create a very user friendly application so that it can be very convenient for the user to use that. I would like to give a demonstration of this application. Okay, this is the main screen. It just gives an overview of whatever functionalities that we have added, like bookmark, contents, etc. Also, in the next screen, we have integrated both the applications, that is the SD card version and Wi-Fi version, so that it depends on the user's choice, whatever he wants to view the video. If he wants to view the videos present on the SD card, he can choose this option. And if he wants to view the video in the Wi-Fi version, he can choose that option. There are some functionalities for the help of the user, like uh, help and about us, that we'll discuss later. On clicking on the SD card version, the first screen displays all the list of videos and table layout that are present in the SD card with the video thumbnails and the text of the video that is displayed uh, beneath that. On clicking on any of the video, you can play the video. For example, if she clicked on that video, the video gets played in the full screen. You can also restore the video size by double tapping on it. On the left hand side of this screen, it shows a list view of all the video thumbnails along with the video titles. This was useful so that the user does not have to go uh, back press the button to view all the videos that are present. Then we have implemented the functionality of drag and drop. You have to long click on the thumbnail of any video that you want to play and you have to drop it to the video view to play that video. This is how we use the drag and drop feature. 
On the right side of the sliding door, there are two options. That is the view transcript and the view contains. The view contains has an expandable list view that shows the topics or the subtopics of the presentation. On clicking on any of the subtopic, the video gets skipped to that position. For example, if she clicked on that topic, the video gets skipped to that particular position where the topic is there. In the view transcript feature, the whole text of the video appears in a scrollable list view. And on clicking on that transcript, the transcript gets full screen. This feature is useful because if the user just wants to read the text and uh, see the uh, view the audio, that is useful here. And on clicking on any line of the text, the audio gets skipped to that part. Then you can restore the previous version by using the uh, small icon that appears on the left. Another drag and drop the video. Okay. Another feature that we have implemented is a compulsory quiz that pops up after five minutes specifically for this video. This is the main screen, that is the quiz time. Okay. Here we have just implemented two questions right now. A user can see whether he is answering a correct question or the wrong, question, wrong answer. And you can just submit the quiz and it takes you to the screen of the result view where you get the question along with the correct answer for every question. On pressing the back button, the video gets re uh, resumed to that position where he was left. Then we have kept the bookmark feature as it is of the previous version since it was very useful. Okay. You can add a new bookmark, you can give the video title and the tag name and the position. And on clicking on the bookmark, the bookmark, uh, the video skips to that particular position. The bookmark is successfully added. And on clicking on that bookmark, the video skips to that position where we have added the bookmark. This was in the SD card version. Now for the Wi-Fi version of this application, you have to click on the Wi-Fi button there and it connects to the server. You have to change the IP settings from the uh, menu options there. You have to add the address of the IP server where the video folder is present. In the Wi-Fi version, it gives you the list in Wi-Fi version, you have just changed the layout of the first screen. To change the layout, the videos will appear in a list view along with the title. And you can search for any video that you want that is present on the server by clicking on the edit text button. For example, if you type ART, it will display the artificial intelligence video. On clicking on that video, live streaming of that video will take place. And if you want to down, the second screen is same as that of the SD card version. If you want to download that video, you can long click there and there you will get an option to download that video. Back to the main screen. We, uh, we have also added some features like help and about us, help to get an overview of whatever functionalities that we have added in this application. And about us gives you, tells you about the proximity, what, what it is and how it is useful to the users. Any queries? How much size is each lecture? For the one hour lecture, how much is the size? Sir, we have cut the lectures for this application. Trim the lecture. We have trimmed the lectures. The card which you used will typically store how many, how much time of, how much, how many hours of lectures or minutes of lectures? It, de it depends on the SD card. For means for one hour lecture, it would be around. If it is FLV file, it would be around 120 to 130 MB. 130 MB. MB. Yep. As far as your software is concerned, what difference does it make whether it is sitting on an SD card or sitting on a Wi-Fi? Sir, if it is in SD card, a user can take it anywhere and get the play the video. For Wi-Fi, it needs an access point to download yeah. the video from the no, no. server. As far as your rest of your software is concerned, it is same, no? It's only getting the list that is the difference. Yes, sir. It's downloading the thumbnail list from the server mm -hmm. in Wi-Fi version. Are you entering the video name for the bookmark? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But why no, you sir, it can be any name, it's not particularly the video name. No, so, so suppose I, I click on that video and I say bookmark for that video, it should automatically take that name, right? Yes, sir. It's implicitly taking that name only. Is it so, taking that yes, name? Sir. No, no, I saw an empty text box there. So actually that text box color, uh, text color is not visible. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay.